mostly about solar panels tonight because we have Stephen here and, and Jenny and they've been talking about those things. But it's certainly this kind of a, a model is limited to just energy production. So, so it can include retrofitting your home or uh, even something to do with electric vehicles or putting a charging station in your home. As long as you can show there will be savings and those savings can be paid back over time, there's opportunities. Okay. In terms of charging stations throughout the province, I think that's absolutely right. We have nowhere near the number we will need to as we see electric vehicles take off. And perhaps there's a role even for SAS power in making sure that those are available throughout different communities. Yeah, I know that we've talked to SAS power, so as a tool, one of our successors, but yes. Uh, thanks very much for your question. I'm, I'm not going to actually directly answer your question. I'm, I'm actually going to use this opportunity to educate the rest of the audience about electric cars because I'm also the new uh, owner of, uh, of an electric car. I drive a, a smaller one with a smaller range. You can see a little white and green smart car driving around the city. I think I'm the only one, so, so you know it's me. It's fully electric. Um, range is a big issue of anxiety when you're thinking about getting electric car because they don't go that far. They don't go as far and the infrastructure isn't there for recharging them. So unlike gas stations, uh, although I will say from growing up in rural Saskatchewan and you know driving several hundred kilometers and you know getting to be ten o'clock at night, you're like crap, where the heck am I gonna fill up with gas? It's the same sort of issue. Um, but most of us do 97 percent or something like that are driving within the city mm -hmm. and for the odd time where you actually do need a vehicle to take out on the road uh, you'd be far better off economically to drive an electric vehicle around the city and to rent an internal combustion engine on your long haul trips that's what we do and and so i actually have a, a an internal combustion car that i use for my long haul trips uh, because some of my trips I'm, I'm putting on, you know, 800,000 kilometers, possibly in a single day. And uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to let you know is that I'm driving a five-year-old electric car, but and it only has, you know, maybe a range at best, depending on the temperature of 130 kilometers. Uh, but the new cars are, in some cases, triple or quadruple uh, that. So uh, electric cars are the range technology is expanding exponentially, it's a great idea, uh, fantastic way. Even with coal-fired electricity, the extreme efficiency of electric cars compared to the, the internal combustion engine means it's a cleaner footprint even with coal-fired electricity. Not an answer, but I, I was talking with someone about, you know, I was mentioning about cooperatives, right? We were talking about the federated co op, and, yep. you know, where, where would an organization like that be at with uh, putting charging stations at their gas stations, right? Since they are a co op and they have certain principles that are to be adhered to, right? Yeah, so, anyways. That was just a conversation I was just having with someone the other day, and I don't know. Uh, I mean, obviously here they, they have a big refinery, but I think we even thought about approaching them as a co-op to see what their interest would be in that way. So I don't know. Just a comment. Yeah. No, I'll mention that to the other member. Hi, Ryan. Um, Carl, just a quick question. How come you didn't introduce Ryan as the next Premier of Saskatchewan? <laughs> no, you, you did catch that, and it did go through my head, and that's usually how I in introduce Ryan. Um, one of the models that we have for Renew Saskatchewan in this event this evening was certainly this is a, a partisan event, this is a new Democrat. Uh, uh, event and, and an idea, but we also want to bring people in, to bring their their why and their how into this, um, to reignite that that vision of, of what we could do, um, how how big this could be, how you know business might see themselves in this, how a community members might see themselves in this, schools might see themselves. So I didn't want to brand it too orange. 
But yeah. uh, if, if you want to come in, <laughs> um, but that was the reason why. Okay, but now my, my question is, um, in the United States, uh, there's been some real progress with the uh, House of Representatives, and of course, Bernie Sanders has been talking about really calling the issue of climate change and environmental degradation. He's put it on the same uh, level as bringing in a new deal. In fact, uh, the Democratic Socialist wing of the Democrats have talked about a Green New Deal. And I, I like that concept. And, and some of Bernie Sanders' comments have also made the environmental degradation and climate change be as big an issue as, as fighting fascism in the 1930s and 40s. And in fact, I would draw a bit of a parallel because it seems like the same players in the 1930s and 40s are back again with different names. <coughs> Not Trump. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd, I'd ask, is the uh, Saskatchewan NDP going to put that same level of commitment to the environment and to really stepping forward with that challenge? And, and we wouldn't be the only ones. Norway is committed to eliminating the sale of fossil fuel vehicles, I believe, by 2030. Sweden the same. Many other countries are really taking this on as a, a huge responsibility. And I think it's time that uh, the Saskatchewan NDP, like the CCF, did in 1944 with Medicare, take the absolute national leadership on the environment. Thanks, George. Um, <laughs> well, as you mentioned, the, the Green New Deal, I was asked by a student reporter at the beginning of the same way of thinking about are we watching what's going on in the States and how that conversation is developing. And absolutely. And as I mentioned earlier, and we'll talk about Renew Saskatchewan in this one piece, but it has to be much of a part of a much larger package. And I really like the way when they're talking about Green New Deal and the specifics are for the states and the, the Democratic Party, we will, you know, adapt adopt everything here. But they're talking about Medicare for all. They're talking about economic inequality as well as talking about uh, addressing climate change. And, and it's really being packaged as an economic stimulus as something that will improve uh, the economy, will improve people's lives. And I really like that because it takes us away from what can be a, a very punitive or, or very uh, depressing approach uh, to climate change and says, okay, how can we, as Stephen said, uh, seek out the opportunity to take advantage of this moment to not only transition our, our production of energy, but also improve the quality of people's lives at the same time. Go ahead, Mike. Hi. I have a question and a couple of comments that might help you with the answer. Um, February 13th and 14th here in China, the world and the media are all going to be here. The news from all over the world are we watching the court on the carbon tax case. It's going to be live streaming. It's that important to the world. Uh, I have for the National Farmers Union who is supporting the carbon tax. I have for a number of, I have for a number of groups who tend to be supporting the carbon tax. The Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment. So I'm talking about your comments about that. They've identified, doctors and counselors and school teachers are identifying that the rise in mental health is directly tied to the uh, terror that young people are having with respect to climate change, which is not something we can stop. That's not the issue. It's how do we survive. And so you talked about mental health being the issue. Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment is supporting the carbon tax in the world as well. And so my question is, is this party going to support the carbon tax? Are you going to be at the court and talking to the media and explaining why? And I'm going to leave you with these words from Greta Thunberg. I don't know if you know about her. She said that uh, she's 16 now. Yay, Greta! <laughs> Uh, 30,000, at least 30,000 children, school children, are going on strike every Friday. And that number is raised. Last week it was 50,000. And here's what she says. And I, I, I 
kind of tear up when I read what she says. But these are the words that are motivating why I'm trying to do what I can. I'm quoting from her. I don't want your hope. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic and act as if the house was on fire because it is. So those are my comments and I, I, I'm asking you, as a party, are you going to be at the courthouse and are you going to be talking to the media and explaining why you support the carbon tax and the, and the, and the right of the government at every level to do everything they can to stop the or adapt to climate change? Thank you, Eddie. Larry, you referenced, uh, you referenced a friend of mine there uh, with Cape, Courtney Howard. She's an emergency physician up in Yellowknife. And she talks to me in, in Yellowknife, she's in Northwest Territories. They're seeing the effects of climate change more rapidly than we are. And her conversations with, with elders talked about how, um, how quickly the change was happening. And she, this is a, an amazingly bright and dynamic person. She said she was depressed for a year, that she went into a, a severe climate-related depression. And she tells that story. And she talks about how uh, advocacy is better than, is a better cure for anxiety. And how she now goes out and works. Uh, she flies out around the world and is part of the conferences and is a, a great advocate for addressing climate change through a health lens. And I really, I really respect Courtney and I really respect Kate. The discussion around carbon tax has become toxic. It's become, it, it's been rolled out in such a way by the federal government that it's become a stick by which right-wing governments can, can beat the federal government. It's become such a, a hot topic that it's absolutely impossible to talk about in a reasonable way. And as a result of that, and I think maybe we, you know, we should take some of uh, the, the blame for how that conversation has gone, not engaging it in the most positive way possible, but the result is that the vast majority of the people in the province are strongly against it. So where does that put us? Where does that put us? And Larry, it's, it's wait for me, I'm not done. Um, the, that puts us in a difficult place. As Abraham Lincoln said, when popular opinion is with you, nothing can fail. When it's against you, nothing can succeed. So we need to recapture this conversation. The court case that you're talking about is going to be very important because it'll tell us whether or not this is coming or not. And then we can have the discussion about if it's coming, how do we do it? And if it's not, what else can we do? What isn't on the table at all is, is inaction. What isn't on the table at all is not meeting our standards, not meeting our commitments. Let's have a serious discussion about where carbon pricing fits in, and what parts of the economy it works and what parts it doesn't, where do regulations fit in, where do the sort of stimulus programs like uh, Renew Saskatchewan fit in for a whole package uh, for making sure that we do what our job is. What is our job? Our job is to reduce emissions and deal with this in a, in a expedient way, do it right. Our job is to also make sure we do so in a way that keeps people working, keeps our quality of life at a decent level, and do so in a way that we actually can do it because we have the people with us. So that's why I think Renew is such an important piece of bringing forward the kind of hopeful option that keep, people can say, I'm part of this. This is part of my life. I'm, a, I'm now a proponent for addressing climate change. And then they can be part of a more fruitful discussion on all of the other methods that are available.